This is the Inherit the Earth Sand and Shadows Developers Report for December 2017. The agenda for this video is status on art and animation efforts, a look back at the Inherit the Earth webcomic and its upcoming milestone, and two short con reports. And I'm Joe Pierce, producer and director of Inherit the Earth Sand and Shadows. On the game art front, Ed Lockemon has been busy with some other projects and has not yet completed the background scene for the Elk Training Grounds. Ed has sent me possible changes to some elements to that scene, and he expects to be completely done early in January. Falconese has started work on the Ram Guard named Tobin. Here are some of the concept sketches. Here's a mock-up of Tobin standing in his scene. Ryan Paxton is also doing character design work, this time for one of the hares that acts as a servant at the Sanctuary of the Orb. Hopefully animation on both these characters will begin shortly. The Inherit the Earth webcomic that acts as its own sequel to Inherit the Earth Quest for the Orb is nearing a milestone, and I thought a little retrospective might be in order. The first arc was illustrated by Allison Hershey, who also acted as co-writer. The next art and the short tales that followed were drawn by Falconies. She also drew the game recap strips that were eventually added to the beginning of the comic archive. The third and current artist is Ed Lockaban, who has worked on two story arcs. Just before Christmas, he drew a special winter one-shot, which turns out to be the 598th strip. When the webcomic returns in the new year, there will be a one-strip story followed by the beginning of the next arc with the milestone strip number 600. Ed is continuing as the illustrator. And this seems like a good time to remind everyone that these developer reports are supported by Inherit the Earth patrons on Patreon. Please consider becoming a patron yourself. In November, I attended Equestria LA. Unfortunately, I was only able to attend on Saturday and didn't take all that many pictures. Here's what I have. The con was held at the Wyndham Anaheim, just a short hop from Disneyland. Here I am in line to get my badge from registration. In the same area was a con merchandise table, which sported a huge plushie of the con's mascot. In the back you can see the entrance to the dealer's room. One vendor's table was outside that room. Dusty Cat was selling his wares, while also keeping an eye on the items at the rear that were to be auctioned off later. The first panel I attended was Process and Profession of Storyboarding. The panelists were, from left to right, Ansley King, a storyboarder on My Little Pony, Kareem Ingle and Casey Hermanson, storyboarders on the new Unikitty series, and moderator I Love Kim Possible a Lot, a fan animator and commentator. Next up was the auction I mentioned earlier being run by Dusty Cat with help from Saber Spark and AC Racepest. Proceeds went to the Wildlife Learning Center located in Silmar, California. Here two representatives from the center have brought out an owl on stage so the audience can ooh and awe at it. Later in the afternoon was the Women in Animation panel. One of the stars of this panel was Lauren Faust, the creative force behind the first couple of seasons of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. The topics discussed were very interesting. A video of this panel is available, and I provided a link in the description of this report, and via the card that should be visible right now. That night, there was a concert and dance. One of the featured performers was Black Griffin, a well-known fan musician who has, at this point, actually sang in a few episodes of the show itself. Ascended fan indeed. So 
The people who ran the con say this will be the last one. So long, and thanks for all the pony. Later in November, I attended Lost Con 44, LA's long-running science fiction and fantasy convention, held at the LA Airport Marriott. Here are pictures from the two days that I attended. This is a picture of the dealer's room from the back. Behind me was the art show, which I don't have a picture of because photography is off-limits. Here is a shot of the tabletop gaming room. There was also a separate electronic gaming area. One room was dedicated to costume repair, an important thing at a science fiction con. Part of that room was used to show off components of a special construction. A life-sized radio-controlled R2-D2. One of the con's guests of honor was comic book artist Howard Shaken, on the right, having a Q&A session with moderator Michael Salavi. Opening ceremonies, which oddly is not at the start of Lost Con, was hosted by Con co-chairman Craig Miller. Here he is talking to writer guest of honor Carrie Vaughn. A long tradition at Lost Con is the Friday night ice cream social, including various flavors of regular ice cream, flavorful toppings, and general socializing. A couple of people were using liquid nitrogen to make instant ice cream. The social was followed by a performance by the Lux Radio Theater, presenting their own take on the adventures of Luke Skywalker. I started Saturday by attending Martian Eye in the Sky, a seminar by Bridget Landry of JPL, about the latest discoveries from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Next, I went to David Gerald's so-called garage cleaning charity auction, but I didn't take any pictures of that. Another Q&A was a discussion between moderator E.J. De La Pena and media guest of honor Jane Esperson, writer and producer on many shows including Once Upon a Time, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Warehouse 13, and Battlestar Galactica. There are tables set up in the convention center lobby for various fan organizations, including Krypton Radio, an internet radio station that features programming for science fiction and fantasy fans. And the founder, Gene Turnbow, was one of the participants of the last panel I attended that day. And by attended, I mean I was a panelist. Wait, there is something very wrong here. That's better. In addition to myself and Gene, Mark Tremino and Neil Halford were the others who yammered about science fiction and fantasy game design and how it has evolved since the early days of Dungeons and Dragons. Both Gene and Mark were employees at the Dreamers Guild although after the time where the company was developing Inherit the Earth Quest for the Orb. And Neil worked for New World Computing, the original publisher of the game. It's a small world after all. I'll end this report with a timely cosplay of the first Doctor, given his appearance in this year's Doctor Who Christmas special. That's it for 2017. Have a great new year.